Okay, gentlemen, welcome to this February 20, 2014 webinar. And tonight, Brian Tucker has really generously agreed to share a lot of his expertise in local SEO. And it's very obvious from Brian's posts inside SEO Traffic Hacks that he's worked a lot and does work a lot in this area and he's got a lot of great knowledge to share. And one of the things that really attracted me to his discussion about doing this webinar was that he wanted to focus very much on the how to go about and it's all those kind of small nuts and bolts points that can really help you in local SEO, particularly <coughs> excuse me, client acquisition. How do you get the clients? How do you keep them? What to charge? These sort of points. So I'm going to hand straight over now to Brian because I know he's got a ton of stuff to go through. And we will have a big Q&A section at the end, so if you can please just hold questions. It may be that the questions that you want to ask, he's coming up to answering anyway, and at the end, Brian will be around to take all of your individual questions. So I'm just going to hand over to Brian now. And hopefully... Uh, can you hear me? Okay. I, we've got you now, Brian. Right. Can you hear the audio okay? Yep. Sounds good for me. Okay, great. Do you have the presentation on a full screen or are you seeing the slide sorter view? Slide sorter view at the moment. Ah, right. Hold on here. I may... I've got a dual screen here, so sometimes it can be kind of odd. Just a second here. I may have to just kind of do one of these things here. Can you see that okay? Yep. Yep. All right. Let me let me hide my toolbar and we'll just kind of roll like this. Okay. All right. Great. So thanks for the introduction, Terry. My name is Brian Tucker. I live uh, in central Illinois. Grew up in this area, very rural area, so this is kind of going to be a grassroots discussion. Uh, I, I've traveled sort of uh, all over the major cities in my years of doing corporate work and lived in Chicago for 18 years so I understand the difference between how business works in big cities and small smaller communities and what I mean by that is communities uh, 50,000 or less in fact the community that I currently live in is a town of 5,000 um, so this is going to be really down-to-earth local local SEO stuff the kind of way they do it in the good old boy times um, and you get, you're going to be able to see sort of how I leverage uh, the advantages of having technology on your side and working with smaller local businesses that are just getting started that are typically not used to talking in the kind of tech talk that we talk about and those types of things. But essentially my motto is I help uh, businesses attract more uh, clients. I help them easier win sales and grow without the pain that most businesses face. And I am not the type of person that goes out uh, that talks about SEO and uses a lot of techno mumbo jumbo because uh, you know business owners don't really know a lot about that. Um, I help clients in the areas of internet marketing, lead generation, and to further it, I also look at sales process improvement. So one of the things that you'll probably know or experience as you go out and you work with these clients is that many of them are used to working with web developers, web designers, web design companies, a guy that did their website for them. Uh, and the problem with that is it, it's really the middle of the middle of the message. Uh, they're not used to working with anybody that has internet marketing experience or actually marketing grassroots marketing and messaging and branding experience and then on the back end of it they're not used to working with anybody that understands their business that understands sales process that can help them you know move things through their funnel faster so I, I kind of take a holistic look when I work with my with my clients and I look at from the beginning uh, all the way through the end process of actually converting that into a lead and putting money in the uh, into a sale and putting money in the bank so the types of clients that I help, and I'm going to kind of go fast here because I've got a lot to cover today. Uh, I really want to get, like Terry said, into the how. I've actually got a, a live presentation that I actually give to my clients, so you're actually going to see the type of approach that I take with my clients and the pitch that I give them, so I'm going to, I'm going to kind of move fast. But my background is in the corporate world. Uh, I help large uh, 
mega corporations with technology solutions, uh, sales, marketing, uh, sales enablement, and sales process improvement. You can see some of the companies that I've, that I've worked with and I'm currently working with down at the bottom. My background is in technology, and just to kind of level set here, I'm just a regular guy. I uh, grew up in a town of 1,000 people. I had 23 people in my graduating class, went to school, uh, went to college, didn't really work out for me. Uh, you know, I was in the music industry for a lot of years and found my way getting more and more and more into technology. I uh, had years of sales experience and what I found myself was evolving from the tech side of the house into the sales side of the house and that was something that was really an advantage for me was having a technology background. So with about 20 years of doing this now, um, what I have found is that many of the strategies that I use on a day-to-day -day basis in the corporate world are extremely valuable if you were to take them and scale those down to a local business owner and the typical clients that I work with uh, are high grossing services businesses. I try to stay away from restaurants, bars, um, you know, these types of things. I look for higher grossing uh, businesses that actually have uh, extremely high converting uh, uh, clients, for example, attorneys, doctors, lawyers, construction companies, um, you know, banks, you know, these types of things that, that, that are higher grossing, that have high margin because it's very easy for them to understand investment and it's easy for them to understand return on investment. So you can have a better discussion with them as to opposed to somebody that's just selling widgets uh, and, they have a, and they have to sell a lot of stuff to be able to, to, to get their return on investment. Typical client that I work with, uh, again, is like a small business owner or a solo practitioner. Uh, these people are not at all in the least bit sophisticated, I would say, or tech savvy. In fact, the majority of my clients don't really use email. Some of them are a little bit more advanced and they do. Uh, texting is difficult for them. If you send them an email and if they respond to you within a week's time, it may be 10 words or less. Uh, these are folks that are either not tech savvy or they have an administrative staff, a uh, secretary or a couple admins or assistants that actually do all that stuff for them. Um, they, don't, they don't get into the technology side of the house and they're very, what I would call, construction paper and crayon. Uh, they kind of do things the old school way, but these folks make a lot of money. Uh, you know, they're very successful, and uh, they all kind of run together. Uh, many of them have a awful website, and usually that is a lead-in for me whenever I meet with these folks because they're typically looking for somebody to fix their website. They know they need a website. Uh, they know they've got to get with the times. Um, the majority of them do not understand what marketing is. Um, these are very, very simple people. They think in terms of advertising, and they think in terms of local advertising. TV, radio, newspaper, the things that are dying. Um, they have what I would call limited marketing budgets. They spend some money on advertising. They don't spend a lot of money on advertising, and the reason for that is, is because they don't have any way to measure the return on investment, and they're basically just throwing money out there, taking a scatter shot, hoping that their phone will ring. Um, they also understand that local advertising is dying. They know that the Yellow Pages is not working anymore. They know that TV and radio is going by the wayside. Uh, again, these folks have high grossing and substantial profit margins. They understand value. They understand measurable risk. Uh, if you can show them numbers, you can show them what their return on investment is. You can have an intelligent business conversation with them. They're going to be on board. Um, they need help with their marketing, but the problem is locally in a lot of these smaller communities they don't know where to go they don't know what to do uh, they, they bas basically have a bad taste in their mouth from all their local ad salesmen that have come in and out of their office and sold them stuff that doesn't work uh, and it's just really an old-school mentality so getting these folks on board is really easy when you know the type of things that we know and you can talk to them in terms of business sense rather than trying to sell them something okay um, how I attract these clients. Um, I can tell you right now that in some of these smaller communities and even in uh, cities, so if you're familiar with Illinois, let's talk about the state capital, Springfield, Champaign is another one, uh, to the point where I have taken several communities in different states and put them together saying this is roughly uh, half a million to 750,000 folks. These type of people do not go online looking for an SEO company. They don't even know what SEO is. In fact, if you said SEO, they'd say, what's SEO stand for? I, I don't even know what that means. 
these are folks that are again used to to um, they're used to newspaper, TV, radio advertising, advertising in the phone book, etc. Uh, so I don't get a lot of leads off of um, off of this uh, pay per click, running pages, monthly charges, SEO, WSO, using WSO approaches. This stuff just doesn't work straight up. Okay, what does work is direct mail. Uh, and I'm going to get a little bit more into that in a second. Um, blending in with the community. So all these types of folks are usually pillars in the community. They're very successful. They're well, they're well known with inside of the community. And the old saying goes, birds of a feather flock together. These folks kind of hang out together. And the repeat and referral business with this and the authority status that comes with this is just off the charts. In fact, I can tell you, uh, generally speaking, when I get a referral or repeat business or somebody actually calls me to help them with their business, my close rate is 100%. I have not yet to have a client tell me, no, I can't do that. No, that's too expensive. No, that's not the right next step. No, that's not right for my business. I mean, this is almost dead simple if you can hit it and you can get it right. Okay. Uh, being inside the community, and what I mean by that is uh, Chamber of Commerce, uh, interacting with those types of folks, going to things like the Rotary Club meetings, and you know, nobody likes to do these. Uh, they're not fun. Uh, they're kind of boring, actually, but frankly, when you get out there and you get in and you start working with these folks, lawyers, bankers, doctors, uh, you know, company owners, small business owners, they're happy to hear what you have to say because it's completely breath of fresh air than what they're used to working in on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, also, getting press is easy. If you can get involved with your local community, you can get yourself in these smaller news outlets very easy. Uh, you can have yourself viewed as an authority when you start to have these um, actual news articles and newspapers. One example for me right now is uh, we have a, uh, a county-wide tax that's being uh, assessed right now for uh, to add 1% sales tax to help fund our local schools facilities. I jumped right on that, got involved in that this morning at 6 o'clock in the morning. I was on the radio with the, with the county superintendent, and I was on the radio uh, talking to this in front of probably... Uh, listening audience of eight or nine thousand people. So these are the things that you can get involved with, you can help with, uh, and you say, hey, you know what, this is not making me money right now, but at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, people are going to recognize you, they're going to know how you are, and you can basically charge what you want. Uh, repeat and referral business, I've already talked about that. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, but you're going to get a lot of that. But the bottom line is, I take a motto, play where you can win. I don't want to go up against larger SEO companies and guys that have, you know, pushed their websites up to the top of, you know, SEO Chicago. I'm not going down that road. I'm going down a completely different angle, which is grassroots, uh, down to earth, sit across the desk, work with these folks, and show them how you can build build their business. And it's all about developing know, like, and trust, and positioning yourself. We all know as the local authority. Okay, Terry. Anything before I move on? You want me to just keep going? Uh, that sounds great, Brian. And I think uh, a really valuable uh, takeaway is that even, for example, if you were pitching for SEO clients in Chicago, in the suburbs of Chicago, or any, any really big city, the fact that so many of those businesses are not tech savvy, as you say, they don't even use email, they don't know what SEO is, means that this kind of uh, very personal, direct marketing, grassroots uh, sort of I don't know, kind of personality-based marketing, if you like, I think would still be very effective in a big city? Absolutely, by all means. Um, you know, all, all of this stuff applies in business, generally speaking. Uh, you know, the key is how do you get in front of that business owner and how do you begin to build a relationship with them because they're just not used to that at all. Yeah. Um, so, so moving along, the basics of getting started. If I had to break this down very, very simple, you know, obviously, with any business, you need a value proposition. What is it that you're bringing to the table? Um, you know, as I said, my value prop is I work with clients from drafting their marketing message or fixing their marketing message to creating or fixing their online properties and their internet marketing properties. You know, frankly, Terry, to, to follow up on what you just said, the majority of these folks don't t think in terms of SEO. They think I need somebody to put me up a website. They don't think about the fact that the website needs to have traffic to it. 
you know, and that's not what well developers do. So my, my value prop is I help them fix their marketing, I help, help them fix their messaging, I help them fix their brand, I help them get online the right way. And then I take it a step further and show them actually how to take those leads, convert them into sales, how to measure all of that and where they can figure out what's working, what's not, and take it to the next level. Um, and I work with them on crystal clear, what I would call third grade no-brainer messages. You know, when I go in and I talk to somebody, I, I get it down to the to the kindergarten level about how it is that I operate. I don't use tech mumbo jumbo. I don't use any slang. Um, I I I also am a very very um, very big proponent of high quality product. And what I mean by that is. If you think in terms of what you put out there, you have to think not in terms of who is the person that delivered the last website to them or who are the type of websites they're used to looking at. What you have to think about in terms is how can I make my stuff look as good or better than what I see on TV or what I hear on the radio or what I see in presentations because that's what these folks are used to. They're not surfing the internet every single day. Uh, and if you can have your stuff look 90% better than ever, anybody else that's out there, you're going to be a rock star because they're going to look at that and they're going to come unglued. I can tell you that I've done two-minute explainer videos for customers. If I could play back the messages for you over the phone, they're absolutely ecstatic. They've never had anybody that has delivered anything to them in the entire span of their business that's been to that level of quality. They just absolutely love it, um, and they'll just rave about it. One other thing I'm sure many of you may have heard about is I actually have a book uh, that I actually give my clients, uh, and I'll show you a cover of what that looks like. I would say probably about a 50-page minimum book that talks about the types of services that you deliver, um, and you can you can sit down and write one of these in a weekend. Uh, I actually took a couple PLR uh, documents and actually used those as my as my starting ground, and actually took those and sat down and rewrote them. Hired an editor, had the editor rewrite them, and I do not sell these. I actually just give these away along with some real business cards. And what I mean by real business cards is. 14 point stock minimum, full color business cards, front and back, clear, nice, professional, thicker than anybody else that's out there. And we've all seen the YouTube video guy of the, making fun of the business cards. It's real. You, you can't have cheap stuff. If your stuff looks cheap, the bottom line is people are going to view you as cheap. Uh, I also give them a free assessment, which I'm going to look at here, which is basically an assessment where they can go away on their own and think about uh, some of the things that they might need, and obviously a telephone number and an email. And you know, if you think big and you start small, you know, you're going to do it. You you already know 99% more than all of your clients do. Uh, you know, they're not very sophisticated people, and you need to have confidence and show that and use that to your advantage when you go out and talk to folks. Uh, my mailer. This is what my mailer looks like, um, and I've got very many different variations of this. This is this is so simple. Um, essentially, what you see is I've got the I've got the message, the headline at the top. Uh, you'll see there I put my local customers and I may put you know a half a dozen different authority websites in the local community that are there so for example maybe a hospital website that I've done or an attorneys website that I've done so they can already see right out of the gate these are six or seven clients that I've already done business with they recognize who those folks are and they understand that those folks are using me and that is the advantage that they're taking I also plop something in there about social media or still using the Facebook or how YouTube video is very very high on the on the man on the uh, on the platform and I essentially offer them a free consultation and you know maybe a Facebook page creation which takes just a couple minutes and one year of free web hosting um, and you can you can bury that and split that and slice and dice it any way you want to but essentially if you've got a if you've got a reseller web hosting account you know you can you can offer that to them for basically a couple pennies a month it's, it's it boils down to nothing um, one other approach that I take on the far right hand side you'll see a very simple follow up letter uh, that is done uh, with a marker font and I send that out on actually some yellow lined uh, school paper there's some special paper that you can buy at pda.marketing.net this stuff works it's very very simple it's right to the point they get it it's visual there's not a lot of text people will not read they're going to look at the pictures they're going to see this and they're going to go okay I see it yeah let me call this guy or let me send him an email and it works um, you know, you need to target businesses without a screen. Uh, and what I mean by that is a business that doesn't have a secretary. If you're going to send this out to law firms, forget it. None of them are going to get it. None of them are going to open it up. I've tried it. It doesn't work. It doesn't matter if you send out uh, postcards. It doesn't matter if you send out mailers, hand address, stamped, whatever. It's not going to work. You've got to get it into the person's hands that make the decision. 
The way to do that is by getting a mailing list. Um, the place that you can get the mailing list is you can actually go to your chamber of commerce. Maybe they'll sell you one. Maybe you can buy a, um, you could go into that town and you could actually get a membership there. Maybe that costs you $100. Maybe it costs you $125 for the year for a business membership. They'll give you the list. It's got all the business contacts, all the business names in it, uh, everything that you need. You can also run web scrapers. You can pull the information that way. Uh, but I try to stay away from targeting businesses with a screen. The bottom line is once you get enough customers under your belt, those businesses with a screen are going to start coming to you by way of repeat and referral business, and that's when you can really, really uh, cash in on this stuff. Um, I use online printing companies to print this, uh, there's, you know, or, or a color laser printer if you have one already. I also use non-standard envelopes. I use businesses, uh, envelopes that are a non-standard size. I use colored envelopes. I use envelopes that look like uh, an invitation would come in. I hand address these. I get my kids actually to hand address these, hand stamp them, and I send out multiple mailings to my list, two, three, four, maybe five mailings. Natural. I have had customers and people even that I know that have not bought for me that have that I've seen out in the pub at night that have said, Hey Brian, I just want to let you know I got your letter the other day and I don't need any of your services right now, but I gotta tell you. I opened that letter up and I thought that it was going to be a complaint letter or, or maybe a thank you card from one of my customers. You got my attention. Let me just tell you, this works. Um, and, it, and it's a lot of manual process uh, and it's, it, you know, it can be costly but you can start out small and you can do this and, and it works. I've tried the postcards, postcards to me didn't work. I've tried long form letters, none of that stuff works. Uh, this is to me what works, it's the easiest way to do it, it's visual. And it, and it happens fast. You want to get it into the screen with a clear and simple call to action, uh, and you'll have a high open rate, and those things are going to obviously convert. Uh, as far as the book that I talked about, this is a cover on the top left uh, side there that kind of shows uh, what the book is like when I go and I hand out to the client, and it doesn't set, talk anything about me except for one page in the beginning that talks about who I am, and it has my picture in there. But it basically gives them all of the information that they would need to know if they were going to hire me. Uh, and it's laid out in a very, um, a, a very simple way. Uh, this is probably, uh, you know, junior high reading level. This book is not overly sophisticated. It doesn't have a lot of, it doesn't have any jargon in it. Uh, you can see my business card there. Again, I, I print this on very thick business card uh, on stock. And then I have a, a business marketing self-assessment checklist that I give to them free as well that basically says, you know, do you have things like, uh, do you have a Facebook page? Do you have a standard marketing message for your business? Do you have a clear uh, process for when a new customer comes from you? How do you handle that? And I usually give them this and they take a look at it and the first thing they say is, no, I don't have any of this stuff, which opens the door right up to me to start having conversations about how I can help them grow their business. The bottom line here is whatever you give to this to a customer, it needs to look and it needs to smell extremely professional and high quality. Otherwise, they're just going to look at you as another person on the street that's trying to make a buck. Can I just add something? Sorry, Brian. Can I just add something very quickly? Yep. Um, in 2008, I released a book that I, I was the publisher of and the editor and the sort of writer of it. And uh, I put it out on Amazon, and I approached people to get endorsements for that book. And I used a kind of similar strategy to what you've suggested there. And I approached some of the biggest names in business. And you can imagine how much these guys get pitched to, like, would just be relentless. And what I did was, I think, I'm pretty sure it was a non-standard kind of, kind of envelope. But it was marked private and confidential. So yep. because it was marked that way, it kind of got to the, the decision maker, the important person that I was targeting, rather than, you know, just, just hitting that kind of gatekeeper or screen that you talked about. Uh, and for that book and using that approach, for example, I managed to get an endorsement. And these people didn't know me at all. But I managed to get endorsements for that book from uh, Stephen Covey, The Seven Habits of Effective People. and. Sure. And from Duncan Bannatyne, who's a multi-millionaire on Dragon's Den in the UK, I think he's worth like 300 million pounds plus or whatever. So just by using that approach, which just, just cost pennies to send, I actually got endorsements from both of those guys. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I mean, 
it's amazing what you can do if you just go out there and do it. I mean, that's the key. Um, you know, it, it, it's 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 about taking that action. You know, and and none of us want to do that. And I didn't think I could sit down and do something like this, but I just locked myself in a room for for two days and did it, and it was done. And I put a check in the box. And now every time I go out and meet with a customer, I hand them that, and I don't care if they read it or not. But when they see that and I give that to them, they 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 view that as an authority, and it's somebody that's got confidence. Okay, so moving along, let's talk about the presentation and the process. So when I go and I meet with a client, um, I actually have a PowerPoint presentation that I'm going to run you guys through really, really fast. I'm not going to get into a lot of detail on it, but I'm going to kind of show you what I walk them through. Um, and, I, and I print that and I bring it with me, and I, and I leave that behind with them when I go so they can have a copy of that and think about that. I print it in color, make it look nice, make it look professional. You might even want to spiral, spiral bound it. And you might even want to put it in a uh, in a cover if you want to. Just make it look professional if you can. I don't ever talk about me. I don't ever talk about anything that I do. I talk about them, their business, how I can help them, and how I can help them grow. Uh, I focus on promoting the future of marketing versus advertising because, like I said, they think in a, in terms of ad local advertising. Always talk in terms of how their business works and how their customers think and find them. So a scenario would be, hey, if I'm working with an attorney, I might tell them. You know, I know that you've got a law firm here in this town of 5,000 people, but think about it. What about the customers that you have that come to you because they travel through this town on the way to work and it's convenient for them to come here, whereas they have somebody locally and they're not there as much and they can stop here on the way, in, way back. Yeah, that's great. I don't get a lot of business uh, here in town. Well, what if we went and we marketed your business to every, uh, every county uh, with inside a 60 mile radius of where you lived at every county seat or every uh, town above 10,000 people and you would be positioned there and they would be able to find you well they don't think like that and advertising companies don't think like that local advertising doesn't think like that so it's about opening their mind up and challenging them and getting them in a, in a position where they say yeah you know what that makes business sense um, I substantiate everything that I throw in front of them with real data or numbers to back it up uh, you know, if you watch successful people, you'll notice that any statement that they make, they usually have some sort of authoritative source or authoritative number to back it up. I always open the door to return on investment discussions. You know, what does it potentially cost you to do one of these types of services and how much margin do you potentially make? I don't care about how much money it is. I just want to know how much margin because I can pretty much figure it out on my own and say, hey, you know what, with this investment, it's going to cost you X. But the bottom line is if you get one customer in here, you're going to one or two customers, you're essentially already going to have paid for your return on investment and from there it's all gravy. So those are the kind of conversations that you want. You want to be able to challenge them on their business later when you start to grow with them and always get them in a position when you leave to say I'm going to create an action plan for you and this action plan, I'm going to show you an example of it as we go through this, that allows them to sort of look at what they could potentially do to take the next step or take a sip of your product or take a sip of your services and what, could, what you could do next. You also want to have conversations about teaching to fish versus fishing. And what I mean by that is do, you want, do they want you to teach somebody in their staff how to run their Facebook page or update their blog or do things that are associated with their marketing? Or do you want to actually have you do the fishing for them and go out and generate leads and bring them to them? So there's a lot of different ways. And then I always set up a follow-up date with a, what I would call a quote. It's not really a quote. What I, call, what I tell them is I'm going to bring them back an action plan. Uh, and I'm going to show you an example of what that is. But, but, I, but I use everything when I, when I present to them. I always tell stories. I always try to compare back to something. And I don't sell to them. I talk about their business. And not only do I talk about their marketing and their, and their, and their website, which is usually what they want help with first, but I also talk to them about mobile, social media, and video. I mean, mobile is huge. I think video hasn't even started yet in, in the grand scheme of things here. I mean, there's just so many opportunities. It's ridiculous. Um, but essentially now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of walk you through the presentation I give to them. And my presentation is called Local Marketing in an Online World. And this is a very, very simple presentation. I'm going to go fast. So excuse me for talking fast. Terry's going to record this and he's going to play it back. So if I get to go in too fast and English is not your, uh, is not your first language, you'll be able to play this back uh, and you'll, you'll be able to uh, watch it again. So. Um, essentially what I talk to them about how local business marketing is changing, these are some of the things that I've already talked about with you, where local business marketing is headed, 
uh, the problems that local business owners are facing, and the six-step action plan to how they can get more sales. So we talk about things like how fast the internet has, in, has evolved. You know, 75 years ago, the telephone it, it was invented. You know, uh, you know, we have things like uh, you know, Facebook that you know came to life of 50 million users in three and a half years, and now we've got you know iPhone games that come out in a matter of days and reach 50 million users. I mean, it's crazy how fast this evolves. You know, and I talked to him about how change is the only constant in life, and you know how information then uh, has changed a lot, and how information now, you know, people go on search engines and they look for places to eat in Shelbyville, Illinois, which is the town that I live in, or maybe I put in whatever town it is that they live in, and I give them an example of this. And I talked to him about how change is the only constant. You know, they cannot focus on what's worked in the past. They cannot focus on where they're at right now. They need to play where the puck is going to be, and they need to be prepared for change, and they need to be prepared. To to change to be able to succeed. And then I basically hit them with a local business reality check, which is, you know, hey, I know you're advertising in the phone book, you know, but most people haven't picked up a phone book in five years or more. And frankly, in the next couple of years, many of your customers will never even have used one. So what you're spending money on right now is going right in the garbage. Uh, and I talked to him about how traditional local media is being replaced. You know, we know newspapers are, you know, Facebook is taking over the newspaper, you know, MP3 and, and, and online streaming is taking over the radio and YouTube as you know taking over the television market you know very quickly and online streaming you know and what that's doing is it's creating a problem for these local businesses these smaller local businesses because they're, all their marketing options are changing the stuff that they were using before is no longer working the way it used to and they don't even know where to begin to start in this world and they need somebody to help them you know they need to understand that 90 percent of, of internet users look for things online I mean, you, you just have to break it to them very simple and tell them things like, you know, look at the way that you search for things on your, on your mobile phone when you're out of town. Look at how your kids search. Look at how your friends search. This is where it's going. And then I point out to them that the problem is, you know, 50% of Illinois businesses, and you can use any state for this, don't have a website online. Uh, and for the ones that do, you know, they look like garbage. And chances are that's also a good number of them because they look at that and means, oh, so basically what you mean is half of, the, half of my competitors don't have a website either. That's right. They don't have a website. And those that do have a website probably aren't positioned at the top of the search engine, so they're not getting any traffic to their site anyway. Um, you know, we talk about the searches, how things are changing, how local search affects their business, you know, how 90% of all online searches result in purchases from offline businesses, you know, how many folks search on their local phone on a mobile device for a business that call that business within a 24-hour time span how much uh, you know search has increased in mobile over the last year you know I show them things like this big map that says this is how we used to look for things you know this is how we're looking for things tomorrow we use Google Maps we use Siri uh, you know this is the way the future is going to be you know folks look for nearby local businesses on their computers and phones and it's inevitable you have got to be positioned in the internet with a good presence with an authority presence because if you don't you're not going to be found. You know, old school, telephone, 1995, this is the way it used to be. Your cell phone now can do anything. Uh, and I show them how, you know, mobile is just totally taking off. It's going to completely, uh, you know, blow desktop and laptop usage out of, the, out of the water here, you know, very shortly. You know, there's more people. We've all seen this slide a million times, but to a local business owner, there's more people that have a a, 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 you know, mobile device and a toothbrush. You know, it's, all this stuff is crazy, and I go through it. You know, I show them things like, hey, look, doesn't this look like this at your kitchen table sometimes? You know, everybody's on their phone. You know, at dinner time, you know, you've got these kids. They're totally wired into these devices. Um, you know, it's just it's just crazy. You know how these mobile devices are completely taking over the world. You know, this is a funny picture. You know, here uh, of this kid. You know, this is this is way it's going. You know, mobile and social. You know, this is, these are powerful messages you send out to these folks. You know, you talk about Facebook, how many active members. They know everybody's on Facebook. They know they've got to be on Facebook. They don't have time for it. They don't know where to get started. YouTube, they don't even have a clue about YouTube and how much stuff that's watched on YouTube. I mean, that's something like half of the video that was watched on YouTube last year was on a cell phone. I mean, it's just crazy how much uh, opportunity there is out there right now, you know, with some of the stuff. But the fact of the matter is, you know, I tell them that businesses that are found online, you know, they grow faster than those businesses that aren't, and they need to get with the times. They need to get up to the top of the search engine. They need to know where they need to be positioned. And, you know, the, the bottom line is the future of local businesses, the pioneers are going to live and the settlers are going to get shot. Those folks, your folks, your, 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 your colleagues and your competition that are around you, 
are not thinking like this. And, and by the time they get there, you're going to be so far ahead of the curve, it's going to be too late for them, and they're never going to be able to catch up. And this is where you need to be thinking. You need to be playing where the puck is going to be, not where it's at right now. Terry, did you have anything you wanted to add quickly before I go on? Um, just a quick note, Brian. I think that to go back to an earlier point you made about kindergarten, third grade level, I think that actually applies to a lot of niche websites as well. And in marketing, uh, marketing kind of attracts a certain uh, intellectual challenge or challenge of intelligence, a puzzle to figure things out. And I've been working in marketing and advertising for a really long time, and I think we tend to lose sight of that that it, the message needs to be much simpler and much easier to digest. So I don't think it's just for local business. Um, unless your niche audience happens to be rocket scientists, which is pretty unlikely, um, you know, I think we all probably need to look at our, our niche websites and kind of make the message, just boil it down and make it even simpler. Well, I, I agree with that, and, and as I said earlier, you know, you need to have confidence because you know 99% more than your customer does. The, the, the problem is that can also work against you when you talk about all the speeds and the feeds of this wild thing called SEO and how, you know, Google searches and analytics and, you know, conversions, and your customer is looking at you thinking that you're talking in Chinese. You've got to get down to business sense and talk like I'm talking to these business folks and show them how you can help them solve their business problem and grow their business. They do not care how many clicks are going to get on a website. They want more customers and more money in their pocket, right? Absolutely. And even, even within SEO, Brian, I mean, going back a couple of years to when uh, I was involved in the launch of SEO Experts Academy, and we looked at, we had three, just very quickly, we had three levels of content, kind of curriculum content in there, which was, I think, was basic, intermediate, and advanced. And uh, Matt Carter and I thought that there'd be tons of people going in there really curious about intermediate and advanced material, but when we actually looked at the video logs, we found that over 90% of the material watched was all at that basic level, and the majority of questions we got were still at that basic level. So even within SEO itself, uh, within internet marketing, uh, it's a complex area that takes quite a long time to grasp. So if you're throwing all of that kind of terminology and those concepts at a, at a guy who spent his life specializing in law or medicine or whatever, uh, you're going nowhere. Right. Or to the guy that runs a backhoe, that runs a construction yeah, business. I mean, exactly. these guys, come on now, they're, cover, they're covering concrete dust. They, they don't, that's not, this is not their wheelhouse. Yep. So essentially, that is, that is the presentation very quickly. I, I know I really blew through that. I would take more time with that with a customer, but I know you guys are, are, are way more up to speed on this kind of stuff, so I don't want to bore you with the details, but that gives you an idea of what I do. From there, at the end of the presentation, I give them a six-step action plan. Um, and I basically say, if I were you, this is what I would do. First thing you need to do, and this doesn't have anything to do with selling anything, I tell them the first thing you need to do is if you don't have a smart device or you don't have a mobile device, go get one. New tablet is less than 50 cents a day. A new smartphone is free. You need to get with it. You need to embrace new technology. You need to go out there and you need to, and you need to start thinking about getting your head wrapped around how can I get my business position on the Internet because Internet searchers, are the most qualified lead you will ever have. They have their, they're searching, they're looking for things, they've got their credit card out, they're ready to buy right now. They don't go look because they're bored. They go look because they have a problem, they're trying to find out information, and when they find out the person that's got the right information that's an authority, they buy from them. I tell them to get their business online the right way. Okay, I show them examples of these bad, bad websites. I can tell you guys right now, we have a local newspaper, online newspaper, that looks literally as bad as one of these, and this is considered the local authority source in my area for the whole county, okay? I tell them, look, you can't, can't have it like this anymore. This is, this is way old, and they laugh. They, they, they joke with that because they know that. They know they need to get this stuff fixed. I tell them very easily, we need to get you listed on places Yahoo and Bing. Okay, these things are free. I'll do them for you. We'll do them at a reduced rate. We'll get them optimized for you. Well, guys, will get you up there. But you've got to do this. You've got to get yourself online. We've got to get you social. We've got to get you a company Facebook page, and we need to get you having somebody posting on it at minimum two times a week. You know, maybe they don't want to do that. We put a system in place to help them do that, but we tell them that. They know that. They know that everybody's on Facebook. They're not reading the newspaper. They look for gossip locally. Get mobile. 
get their get their listings on mobile so folks when they're out running around in their vehicles they can find them tourism is another niche we have a lake here in our community tourism is huge we've got like I think a million people three million people that come to our lake every every year these businesses are crawling all over this stuff because they search on their phones whenever they're coming to town uh, then I get into this I get into a bonus and I show them a real example of a local site and I can tell you right now this is real data this is one of my sites one of my businesses that I own it's actually my wife's this is in a town of 5,000 people guys this is simple okay this is not overly difficult we're all professionals we know how to do this I show them very simple here's where I started this website in October 2012 in the first month that we opened it up we had 585 visitors and they look at me and they go holy cow you had 585 visitors to your first site in the first month how did you do that well I'm a professional that's how we do it but what I also show them is that in one year's time in a town of 5,000 people we had 2,238 visitors to that site that is the equivalent of more than what 28,000 folks knocking on your business's front door in one year and this is all local search as you can see half of that is from Facebook and one half of that from Facebook is mobile devices when they see this the light bulb goes off they can see something that's been measured they can see where the folks are we can show them examples of it and now they're all over this right um, they're crawling all over it so you know I tell them look marketing is just like working out you see this we started this business in October 2012 We've now in 2013, we've had 2,000 visitors. We worked out every week, and we did marketing on this every day. And look at the results that we've got. Look at what our business looks like now. It was weak. Now it's strong. And as a result of this, this business has, res this business has booked 60-some-odd uh, events in their first year, and they're totally in the black. Okay, Most businesses can't do that. But this is how you have to talk to them, and this is the type of information. Again, I bounce back to this. Change is the only constant you know play where the puck is going to be you know pump them up again and then I talk to them I basically say hey look if you guys like this this is what you like then what I'm going to do within the next day or two is I'm actually going to come back to you with this action plan so most people write up a contract they write up a long document they give them everything that they want in some long hand you know five page form I don't do that I used to use a one page contract or a two page contract frankly I've gotten completely away from that and I break it down to the simple level three PowerPoint slides I come back to them within a week and I basically lay it out just like this I lay the scope out at the top in the mission box of which you can see here and I basically lay out each thing that I'm gonna do to them with pretty pictures next to it and number it and say here's what I'm gonna do for you this is one of these for a client that I just actually did so this is real-world stuff you know tell them I'm gonna you know we're gonna look at your existing web contact content we're going to streamline it we're going to fix your marketing messages we're going to clean all this mess that you have up here you know it's going to be visually driven mobile compatible site with high quality photos we're going to get you YouTube videos we're going to establish your Facebook page you know all this stuff step-by-step -step training videos I lay this out for them very simple nine things okay then what I do is I go back to them a week later and I say okay I've laid it all out for you here's all the steps that I think you need to take to get going and get to from where you're at from point A to point B and get your phone ringing and get folks coming in the door okay then what I do is I give them a pricing sheet and as you can see this is mapped exactly to the page that I had before it's number one two three four five six seven eight nine and has it listed out very simple there and I show them a discount I usually pad the price up and give them a 25 percent local business discount some people may not want to do that but they love this they absolutely love it they love the fact that they don't have to pay for the first year web hosting so if they've got a website they know they don't have to screw around with moving it or doing anything with that because they're afraid of that they don't do technology or maybe they fired their last guy or it was a guy they had a bad taste with you know whatever it is that's done it's all taken care of and and you know I show them a discount I get them started get them going and this allows them to take a sip and they don't have to buy all these things but I tell them you know if you purchase all these I'm going to give you a small business discount. Not one time have I ever had a customer come back to me and say, you know what, I don't want number six. Ever. Okay? Um, and then basically, here's my terms and conditions. Now, the only difference between this terms and conditions is I, if I were selling some SEO services, I may put a one paragraph in there that says, you know, we're not responsible. We don't control your rankings. Google, Google controls that. But this is my terms and conditions. And frankly, I don't worry about signatures on a contract. I don't worry about any of that you know I don't know how it is in in other countries it's different but here in in where I'm at you know if you give me a check for these services you've accepted it okay you have paid for it you know what you're getting yourself into so 
um, you know, this essentially is how I work with my clients and, uh, you know, the process that I use. Um, and I really don't have anything more uh, to present to you. I mean, I could get more in detail, but what I'd like to do at this point in time is actually uh, take some questions from you folks and uh, see if there's any more knowledge I can add. Okay, Brian, let me just check here. Uh, I might chime in with a few questions of my own, actually. Right. Uh, it seems to me in local SEO, Brian, that a big thing is kind of managing client expectations because they've kind of been, they may have been BSed a bit in before. Uh, I'm not sure if you specifically run into that. But uh, uh, how do you, uh, in the longer term, I guess this is sort of how do you keep those clients, how do you manage their expectations going forward? You know, have you got special kind of approach techniques for that? I, I actually do. Um, I, I, I take an approach. So, for example, I'm working with an attorney right now um, who I, I did some initial work for. I kind of patched up their website and I got them going. Uh, what I do is I actually play off my other clients. So I've got one attorney that I'm working for in a large metro area, and I've got some very, very good results for them. What I do now is I go back to the other attorney and I say, hey, look, this is a brand new approach that nobody else is using, and this is the kind of results that this client's getting. They're getting three to four new leads a week that they don't have any, that they, they have a very low investment on this, and I can tell this client that I'm speaking with, I know this is the, the exact same thing that will work for you and basically challenge them. I even get to the point with some of these clients where I have such a good relationship with them that I will say, look, I'll tell you what, I will go out and I will do this and I will not bill you until you get the first client or you get the first two clients to get your return on investment and when that happens then you can pay me because I know that that's going to happen and I know that it's going to happen within a very short time, probably within a week or two and it's done. You know, so I continually uh, challenge them, and if you, and if you ever want to read a good book, there's a there's a a short book out there called The Challenger Sale, and it's based essentially on this methodology: is to continually challenge your clients to grow their business because they love that. They're surrounded by negativity every day, and they don't have anybody that's pushing them like that, so they really love that. Good stuff. Uh, Chris is asking: Do you have some kind of recurring revenue model? Your pricing sheet just shows one-time charges. Yeah, on that on that particular contract, I don't. I do have some recurring models for you know maintenance, updates to sites, you know Facebook pages, YouTube videos, whatever it is. But essentially, this is this this pricing sheet that you're looking at is a very low end one. Um, so, for example, a referral that I got off one of these is a local county hospital. Okay, this turned into a uh, probably a 60 page website for them. Their current provider that they were doing business with was awful and charging them, and just it was just a horrible. 20-year-old uh, relationship and they were still still doing business the way it was 20 years ago. Basically to take the content that they had on their website uh, and move it into a new WordPress system took me about 10 hours to do that and I was able to charge them upwards of $25,000 to do that and now I have a retainer with them to continue doing those services and managing their site for them for a year. So that's when I talk about the repeat and referral business. They didn't even challenge me on my price. They said let's do it and let's go. Very good. Uh, can you also, Brian, just give us a quick outline of the tools that you use to kind of manage all these because a business like this can get kind of quite complicated in the details and logistics of it? Yeah, so as far as managing my traffic, well, let's say, let's, let's first talk about sites. I use, um, what's the one you're testing now? It's a WP. Um, Main WP. Yeah, main WP. I've been using that for about a year to manage all the sites and all the backups and everything like that. Everything is on WordPress. All my clients are on WordPress. Um, as far as managing the business, uh, you know, email. Uh, I use PeeWeek for all my analytics. Um, you know, a lot of these folks, it, it doesn't require a lot to manage a lot of this stuff. I mean, it, it's it's very straightforward and it's very simple. So. It, this isn't some cr crazy hairy thing. I mean, my thing is I would rather work with less higher paying clients than small, uh, high transactional, high volume clients. That's just not my thing right now. Sure. Uh, Steve is asking, do you invest in link building, citation building, etc., or do you just set up these, these properties up for them, SEO optimize them, and let them be? I do it all. Uh, I, quite frankly, I'm doing a lot with Parasite pages right now, and I'm doing a lot with video SEO. 
Video SEO for me right now is hot, 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 hot. And what I mean by video SEO is not some junky commercial. I'm talking about taking an authority, uh, maybe a construction home buyer, and having them do a quick video that talks about the 10 biggest mistakes you choose when develop when when you know building a new home. You know these types of things. These work uh, because it shows that it positions them online as an authority. It positions it gives the customer a chance to see them and understand them and build a know like and trust factor before they even meet them. Uh, it it just it, it works. It's t it's time and trust tested and proved and it and it's and it's good stuff. Excellent. But yeah, as far as link building, we do all that. You know, uh, you know, full full SEO work. Sure. Okay. Uh, if possible, Brian, it'd be great to see an example of one of those videos. If you have a link, I could put it underneath the recording of this webinar. Yeah, absolutely. That, that would be, be happy great. to. What is your preferred? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, what is your preferred parasite page type at the moment for local SEO? Oh, it depends. Press releases. I've got some S3s that are doing pretty good right now. Um, YouTube videos are really good. I'm doing some testing right now with some SoundCloud. So basically, what we would do is we would take the top ten uh, videos and take those and actually put those in audio format and try to push a SoundCloud playlist. I can tell you, I'm not having as much luck with that as as I thought I was going to be. Mm -hmm. But that's another good one. Uh, you know, it just it just depends on the client. It, de it depends on on what the need is and what you need to get up there. But but video is hot. I mean, okay. it, it 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 works. Sure. Do you do anything with Yelp listings or have any experience with those? I don't. I I don't really. I do citations. I buy citations. I haven't done a lot with those. Um, you know, frankly, Terry, in the areas that I go into, the competition is so low. Yep. I mean, basically, all you've got to do is go out and fix their website and put some basic SEO in it, and you'll pull the, four, the top four listings right out of the box. I mean, it's it, we're talking no-brainers. This is not highly competitive niche. Sure, sure. I mean, our, just to, to uh, emphasize your experience there, we've got some friends of ours here in Sofia, Bulgaria, and we SEO'd a website of theirs, truly, truly awful website. Uh, you know, and that's typical, I guess, in a lot of local SEO stuff. And with like half a dozen uh, PR three or four backlinks, it was like number one for ten terms, just like instantly. Um, and the funny thing is that even though they had all these really good rankings, their website actually had no way of contacting them on it. It literally had right. no phone number, no email address. You yep. couldn't, even if you liked this company, you couldn't. Physically, unless you, I guess you drove around to their address, I think that was on there somewhere, but you couldn't do it. And it does show you that level. These people, like they're kind of, uh, I guess, sort of lost in the busyness of their day-to-day -day work and things like that, just so simple. And we had a real struggle getting the correct phone number from them, you know, getting <laughs> a right email address. It took months. It took literally months, uh, yeah. even though this will, could really transform their business. and. Uh, it just shows that level of, uh, I'm not sure what quite the right word of it is, but it just sort of the mindset you're often dealing with in local SEO and how you've got to try to turn that around and I guess, you know, yeah. in certain cases be really persistent with them. Absolutely. I, 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 I transformed a site this weekend uh, for a winery that's had a site up for about eight or nine years and they're ranked everywhere. Uh, but they didn't have their telephone number. They didn't have a contact form. I put a contact form, and they got like ten emails in one day. They called me up and couldn't believe how much how much uh, visibility they're getting out of their website already. So it's just some of the simple things sometimes. Yeah, and I think in SEO we we kind of don't understand the true value of what we know. Like like you say, something like a contact form or a live chat box or uh, all of the, having a Facebook page or whatever can can actually financially transform the lives of these small business owners. Uh, now, to, to everybody on this call, that stuff is like, uh, you know, so old and so simple and uh, basic, but for so many of these businesses, they're just not doing it, not even aware of, the, the, of it existing to help them in the first place. Right. I mean, basically, you're going after some of these businesses that, that aren't doing anything. Yep. And just by doing something, you know, you could potentially drive 30% more to their bottom line every month. Yep, exactly. Uh, Chris has another question for you, Brian. He says, do you, do you do anything specific with your places accounts to make them rank better or better optimized? 
Uh, yes, I do actually. Um, I obviously optimize all of the pictures that go up with it. Uh, citations are big. Also, getting um, uh, trying to you know one of the biggest challenges that you have with a lot of customers is trying to get uh, customer testimonials uh, up on their on their citations. Um, so I really work with them to try to somehow or another mine those out of emails or whatever I can do, uh, you know, to try to get them some presence on there. That 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 to me is huge. Um, and then you know, obviously through the through the natural rankings and some link building, you'll see those get pushed up as well. Very good, good stuff. Brian, thank you so much. It's been fantastic to hear your direct experience. No theory there; it's all direct experience from the trenches. And uh, if people have kind of follow-up questions that they didn't really think of at the moment, or maybe they watch the recording, if they if they post those uh, beneath the recording uh, posts in SEO Traffic Hacks, it'd be great if you could just chime in with a couple of answers to help them out. Absolutely. Anything I can do to help continue to help contribute, I'm here to answer any questions anybody has. This is all stuff that uh, is, is, is simple, and I'm happy to help any way I can. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Brian, again for a fantastic presentation and for everyone who attended. And as, as you heard then, if you've got further questions for Brian, just post them below the recording post inside SEO Traffic Hacks. So thank you, guys, and see you on the next webinar. Thanks, Terry. Thank you. Bye-bye.